Celebrating their combined histories of improving the lives of Pinellas County children, the Junior League of St. Petersburg and the Juvenile Welfare Board held a joint reception at the Museum of Fine Arts in St. Petersburg. The event took place the evening of September 27th in the museum's conservatory. Guests paid homage to the legacies that connect the two organizations as each celebrated significant anniversaries. 85 years for the Junior League of St. Petersburg and 70 years for JWB. From current and former leaders of the Juvenile Welfare Board and the Junior League, to JWB staff and league members, past and present, to community partners, dignitaries, supporters, and friends. More than 250 guests gathered to exchange handshakes and hugs, browse historical exhibits, honor descendants of the early champions and founders, My father. <laughs> and take pleasure in knowing that the work being done for over seven decades has truly made a difference for Pinellas County's children. We've grown tremendously in the kinds of things we're able to feed back into the community. Uh, from a $75,000 appropriation in, in 1947 when the, the board first met to over $60 million today, we're able to, to impact a whole lot more folks than we ever did. Uh, we're anticipating this year serving better than 54,000 children and families. And, and I think, think that says something about not, the two, not only the two organizations, but also about the community that was willing in 1946 to say we're going to pledge tax dollars to make our kids better. The league's past president, Gentry Adams, welcomed guests before turning it over to Elise Minkoff, who shared the histories and the bond that connects the two organizations together. We've all heard the phrase, wanting a seat at the table. Part of what I hope you take away tonight is that the Junior League of St. Petersburg not only had a seat at the table when it came to establishing the Juvenile Welfare Board, it set the table. And then it proceeded to set a visionary course for fulfilling the needs of Pinellas County's children. In the early 1930s, the Junior League of St. Petersburg emerged as a leader and advocate of children's services. But despite their many successful efforts, few alternatives existed for troubled children at that time. In 1944, Pinellas County Judge Lincoln Bogue identified two groups of children that came before the courts, dependent children and delinquent children. With no formal structure to place in place to house them or shelter them or to even counsel them, these children <coughs> as young as one, two, three years old, were placed into the general prison population. Hard to believe, isn't it? The Junior League thought that was intolerable. So did the rest of our community. Judge Bogue and Junior League leaders joined efforts with attorney Leonard Cooperman, who drafted a bill to create the Juvenile Welfare Board of Pinellas County. With the help of the Junior League, the legislation was approved, and county voters agreed to tax themselves in order to provide help and assistance for our children in our county. The two organizations continue to enjoy a special bond and partnership, including JWB's recent support of the Junior League's childhood literacy efforts. A special thank you tonight to the JWB for your long-standing partnership and most recently this year for providing all of our books for our Pout Pout Fish puppet show. We're very excited. Um, those can be distributed at the show. And then also hundreds of chapter books, which are very hard for us to come by, that were distributed at our back to school care fair. As the reception drew to a close, a special legacy plaque was unveiled, honoring the 117 men and women who have served on the JWB Board of Directors over the past 70 years. Thanks to their guidance and service, the lives of countless children and families have been improved. Thanks to the investments entrusted to them by Pinellas County citizens, our communities have been strengthened. 
Mrs. Barton, one of the League's founders and past president of the League, served as the Juvenile Welfare Board's chairwoman not once, not twice, four times. But she was not the last leaguer to serve on the board. Mary Wyatt Allen, who in her eight-year tenure on the board and as chairwoman, oversaw the 1990 successful referendum, which raised the millage rate from 0.5 mil to 1 mil. Since the 90s, several members of the St. Petersburg and Clearwater Junior League have served on the Juvenile Welfare Board. I am proud to say that I am one of those Junior League members who is able to serve, support, and advance the mission of both the League and the Juvenile Welfare Board. From the early days of serving children, and even to this day, JWB and the Junior League of St. Petersburg continue their shared commitment of always putting children first. It is absolutely amazing of what JWB and the Junior League of St. Petersburg can do together.